Hi. In this video, I want to show you how Robot Basic can be powerful enough to control real robots and yet be the perfect beginner's language. Since Sam Michelle and I were both college professors, we knew what was needed in the language, both from the professor's point of view and from the students. When we designed Robot Basic, our goal was to create a language that was powerful enough to handle nearly any project, no matter how large or how robust. We wanted to make sure that even beginning students could create interesting programs. This meant that we had to create a language that could grow with the student. Let me explain what I mean by that. Most schools today are introducing their students to programming by one of two methods. Some throw their students directly into a C++ or a Java class. The idea there is that their students won't be wasting their time learning some interface or some idiosyncrasies of a language that they'll never use again. Unfortunately, this means students, when they first start programming, can't focus on the fundamental programming concepts that they need because they're too bogged down trying to understand cryptic syntax or class structures, all the complexities of, of some particular user interface. At the other extreme, you get schools that introduce students to programming using a simple graphical language that allows students to assemble a program by wading through menus and, and picking predetermined choices. Students are exposed this way, may find that computers can be fun. They may even get a small understanding of what problem solving is all about. But, and this is a very big but, Students that learn this way have to start all over when they move on to a real language that can handle real-world problems. The robot basic approach is totally different. Students are motivated right from the start because the user interface is extremely simple and they can be writing programs involving animation in just a few minutes. More importantly, they won't be just piecing together a bunch of menu selections they'll really be writing programs. The robot basic commands that students can see first can be extremely easy to understand. These simple commands allow them to write interesting and exciting programs almost immediately, giving them the opportunity to focus their attention on concepts instead of syntax and interfaces. Once the students understand these basic concepts of programming, it's real easy for them to move on to more complex commands and functions without the confusion that you often find associated with beginning programming classes. This is that ability to grow with the language that I'm talking about. Let's look at some examples so that I can show you exactly what I mean by growing with the language. If you programmed back in the 1980s, you remember syntax as simple as this. It was easy then to teach someone how to make a simple program in just a few minutes. Robot Basic has this simple syntax available. Notice the input statement and enter a number. If you run this program, at the bottom of the output screen in Robot Basic, it'll prompt you by printing that string and waiting for you to enter a number. In this case, we'll enter the number 10. When you press enter, the program the for loop that you saw before will print the numbers from 0 to 10 because that's what the loop was doing for i equals 1 to 10. This lets the student see very quickly what a for loop does. Let's look at the program again but let's add one more line. Right after the for loop let's put in the, the command set collar i. So we're setting the collar to 0 the first time through the loop to 1 the next time through the loop, to 2 the next time through the loop, and so on. The student gets to see very quickly what's going on and how all this works. Let's run this program now. Again, the program prints the numbers, but now they're in 11 different colors. Let's modify this program again, make it do something more. We're going to replace the print statement with XY string. The print statement was very easy to use, but it was very limited because it started at the top of the screen and each line printed on the next line. The XY string requires formulas, but it allows you to print anywhere you want. 
If we run this program, you'll notice that we've moved the numbers over a little bit because we have control. Once the student has gotten used to using formulas for XY string, we can use XY text. We've added two lines to this program. XY text allows us to control a lot more. The size of the font, the type of font, even bold and so on. Let's watch it when we run it. We've given the student a lot of power, but we didn't force them to learn all about it in the beginning. We let them understand the concepts of a for loop without getting into all those complexities. Robot Basic has many commands that allow the student to grow. Look at the new input statement in this program. Instead of input, it's XY input. It'll bring up a special box anywhere we want and allow them to enter a number. This is the input box produced by the new input statement, and it can pop up anywhere on the screen the program writer wants. Once the student is ready, Robot Basic offers many Windows style components. Let's run this program and look at a few examples. Here you see a button, an edit box, and a dialog box. Robot Basic even allows you to use the basic syntax or even a C syntax for many statements. Even the graphic statements in Robot Basic are designed to grow with the student. Here we see how to use normal line statements to draw a triangle, then the draw shape, and then we demonstrate that the draw shape is much more powerful. It can even draw something like a simple tank or even something more complicated. If you run this program, you get these shapes. The draw shape command is just the beginning for Robot Basic. Once the student has mastered the simple techniques with draw shape, they can be introduced to a full suite of commands that can manipulate bitmaps, giving the user the ability to create complex animations very, very easily. Let's look at another example. In this case, we're going to draw two lines on the screen and then locate a robot down below the line. If we run this program, the robot will move toward the line. Notice it stops. Let's modify the program so the robot moves forward 200 pixels, making it go far enough to collide with the wall. In this case, the robot runs into the wall and we get an error message saying that it has collided. Suppose we have the students try to get the robot around that line. Here's an example of how they could do it. We're just getting them a starting point. We're going to have the robot turn a little to the right, and then move forward. Let's watch. Notice the robot turns and then moves down. This gives the student the idea of how he can put together a bunch of statements. This is an example through trial and error that they finally work on until they understand how to get the robot to go around the line. Let's watch. It turns, moves forward, turns left a little, forward, left, and finally moves back to where it belongs. These simple examples have been successfully used to teach middle school students how to program. High school students use the sensors available in Robot Basic to give intelligence to the robot so that it can react to its environment. College students can work with the simulations or even use Robot Basic to control real robots. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and realized that, that Robot Basic is a viable choice to use in schools anywhere from middle schools and high schools right through colleges and, and more. I think you'll be really surprised at how powerful the language is, and I hope you'll go look at some of our other videos that show you how we can use Robot Basic in, in engineering or writing video games, uh, in education, in, in animation, in simulations. We have a lot of videos and can really demonstrate a lot of our capability. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you go to Robot Basic and download your free copy. Thanks for watching.